loved it, especially yeah. when when the breakdown actually happens and then it just goes into like a hockey fight. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh man, chef's kiss on that. Yeah, so yeah, good. that was the that was the only part I wanted. That was the whole <laughs> point. That was the whole point of the video. Was I was just like, oh my god, when this breaks, it's like, and then it was, I need a victory. It was like that's the most drop your gloves moment I've ever heard in a song. <laughs> Today on the show, we are joined with John and Andy of Point North. They are on the cusp of releasing their brand new album, Prepare for Despair, that drops on August 18th. And around hearing about some of the awesome singles on that album, we take a deep dive of the evolution of Point North as a band and a very introspective look of why they do this through ups, through downs, the drive, the inspiration. And we end off with some must hear advice. For anybody who's trying to take a step into the music industry. So let's get into it. Yeah. Yo, yo, what's up, dude? Hey, Andy, nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, brother. How are we doing? Great, man. Uh, how's your day going? Is it morning for you? Are you in Cali right now? Or? Yeah, in California, it's almost 930 in the morning and uh, doing well, doing well. It's been like incredibly hot for the last couple of weeks here. So I think everyone's kind of hunkered down in their AC. That's certainly what I'm doing right now. Oh, yeah. Well, I appreciate you waking up a little extra early uh, to hang with me today. And um, for sure. Yeah. John and I are, are early risers. So this is easy for us. Oh, amazing. Amazing. I'm on the East Coast. It's kind of noon, which is still early for me as a degenerate. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy to speak to, with you guys, with you today. But um, even uh, I wanted to say I'm pretty new to listening and finding out about you guys, too. And uh, I first like heard some tracks without seeing a picture or a music video mm -hmm. and one thing that really impressed me was it's such a big sound and then to find out it's only coming from three people as well and I kind of want to just know uh when you guys met and decided to become a band have you always had like this type of sound or was it something different in the beginning and evolved to this or this is so great. Honestly, I love this take because most of the time, like it's with people who have like kind of seen our journey because we have evolved. Like that's really one thing about us is our sound is changing and has changed. Um, we used to be a five piece. So it's like oh, the size wow. of the band has changed. The, you know, like kind of our output just in general is, has evolved and, and, you know, kind of ever flown. So um, yeah, we, you know, if you listen back to our records, we used to be much more pop punk leaning, certainly no room for like screaming or any any sort of that world. And now it's almost like so, you know, cohesive with our sound. So there's a there's a lot of things that we've done to kind of change and evolve. And I still think there's ways where we keep our sound like organic and true to ourselves and true to what people, you know, identify us as sounding like. But um, it was not always this way. That's for sure. Yeah, that's super cool. And like I have got exposed to the newer tracks and uh, I did kind of take a backwards dive i guess uh, yeah, yeah, on yeah. your spotify to the older albums and yeah you're right it's cool like just kind of seeing the changes and everything but uh yeah. it's also interesting to me how you're saying like the band got smaller but to me it sounds bigger in a way like just production sure. wise and everything more sure. epic and stuff like that but yeah yeah and that just comes from efficiency right like mm -hmm. we just you know, we worked better internally as a three piece. And I think so often in bands, um, which are the hardest things to maintain and keep the same and form relationships with people that all have the same intent and goal. Like it's just, it's, you know, it's not always easy. Um, and, and it just got to a point where we knew who like, who the core members were and, and who was operating and, and driving the bus. And it just kind of formed its way into that. But that has almost nothing to do with sonically. That's, you know, that's happening on like the politics side of things. But then sonically, we're always trying to get bigger and we're always trying to be nastier and meaner and, and you know, bigger sounding. So that will be uh, something we strive for regardless of who or how many people. Oh, amazing. And John, yeah. nice to meet you. Thanks for stopping in. What's up, man? How you doing? Oh, great, man. Kind of excited. I thought this was going to be a one-on-one -on -one with me and Andy. And then I saw your yep. name kind of pop up in the corner. I'm like, oh, this is great. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Good to meet yep. you, dude. Yeah, you too. But basically what me and Andy were just uh, in the middle of talking about, um, I kind of explained to him how I 
I just recently found out about you guys. And as I was listening to the tracks, very surprised to hear that such a big sound was only coming from three people as well. And he was was kind of just breaking down like your evolution and everything um, through being a five piece to becoming what it is today. Yeah. Yeah. Big change. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. And I got to say, as a Canadian, I really, really enjoy your video for safe and sound, the hockey and everything. (laughs) It was so fucking sick. And even, uh, yeah, even just a big part of my life too. Like I've always been into like the heavier stuff, like metalcore too. So just like the collaboration with Ghost Inside is awesome. And I just you want to yes. like give me a little like uh like details of how you linked up with those guys and made this track. Yeah. Yes. Um. We. So I've known the Ghost Inside boys for like a very very long time. I went to their. I went to the same high school as them, but they were like five years older than me, or so I missed them. But um. But we all grew up in El Segundo and uh, Andy and I are from like the same area in the South Bay of California, uh, South Bay, like by LAX. And so they were like a pivotal part of um, the hardcore scene. They were Before they were the ghost inside, they were called A Dying Dream. And they played with uh, Let Live, who is now Fever 333. Um, and so we would just go to these hardcore shows as freaking 13, 14 year olds. And we like watch them. And yeah, I, I, I like to say that my first band tee was a dying dream shirt that I bought at a teen center show um, that, you know, me and all my friends like just walked to and then walked home after. And um, so anyway, so um I'm trying to think of like how I linked with vigil. I, so we had the song that was like done and we needed someone awesome to like scream on the bridge um we have like andy does like screams for us like now like we have a lot of andy like screaming on the album but we just thought that it would be a cool opportunity for a feature um and so i've like talked to vigil like a lot we weren't like close or anything but um we're i'm friends with jim we're friends with jim and um so it was cool we would like talk to jim and then talk to the dudes like by extension at like festivals and stuff that we would play together and then so i just shot vigil a dm um and like he didn't get back for a while. So I kind of thought it was not going to happen. And then I messaged Jim and I was like, dude, do you mind giving Vigil a nudge? See if he got his, see if he got his DM. And he was like, oh yeah, for sure. So Vigil responded. And then he was like, you gotta just text me. Like, I'm so bad at this. So I was like, all right, for sure. So I just texted him and like, yeah, it was super easy. Like he was just down to be a part of it. And the the dudes are like a fan of the bands of, of Point North, which was really cool. Cause like we're huge fans of theirs. And um it just kind of worked out. It's like, I, I always say it's so hard to facilitate a feature when it comes to schedules and release dates and availabilities and studio availability and studio budgets or whatever to go track the part. And it's a lot of bandwidth to ask somebody who's like constantly touring or whatever to like, you know, sit down and, and write a verse or whatever. And that's, it's, it's, it's it doesn't sound like much, but it's asking a lot, like, you know, and um and he was just super open to it and and we're just super grateful and and uh yeah it was like the that section that he screamed over neil from a day to remember wrote so we had oh, wow. reached out yeah we had reached out to the a day to remember guys because we had toured with them and so um we're pretty cool and i sent them basically i just sent him the song with like 32 bars of emptiness and I said, yo, Neil, like fill this up with like a heavy breakdown. So like Sick. he sent it back and our faces just melted. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was like, yeah, we got to do this justice. And then so, yeah, we got Vigil on it. And and yeah, the stars aligned like six different ways for that song when it came to the feature, Neil's part, the release, the music video was like an inv- was a was a vision I had that like is pretty hard to get a get a vision for something, especially with something like a music video. And then uh, it comes out like as cool as it did. So shout out to our director Christian for making that happen. But um, yeah, and then it and then it's just <laughs> it's just crushing the best response. It's crushing. It's it's just soaring over at radio, and uh, it's like it was number one in Octane. I don't know if it still is, but um, and uh, it's just getting all kinds of love. So it's just a uh, it's a huge success. Like like personally and as a song. So yeah, that's kind well, of the story. 
Hell yeah. It's cool to kind of hear like the little pieces behind it. Cause I think you guys made magic together and even yeah, uh, shout out to the director again. Um, I just loved it. Especially yeah. when, when the breakdown actually happens and then it just goes into like a hockey fight. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, chef's kiss on that. It's yeah. So yeah. That was the, that was the only part I wanted. That was the whole <laughs> point. That was the whole point of the video was I was just like, oh my God, when this breaks, it's like, and then it was, I need a victory. It was like, that's the most drop your gloves moment I've ever heard in a song. So I was like, I was like, let's just do a game. Everything else doesn't matter. We'll skate around, whatever, dumb little like game. And then I, all I care about is the fight scene. So just got to get that. And then it was awesome. <laughs> yeah. I can also imagine it's kind of challenging to shoot a video on ice as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah especially when no one when no one knows how to skate. <laughs> oh, amazing! Did you have have uh, any like sc- uh, stunt skaters in for you? Like, to nah, fake some like, scenes or... no. Well, actually, I think I think someone like went into the goal for Sage, so but there wasn't really any like Sage and goal moments. Um, but we all got out there, and you know, I was like, I I skated before. I grew up playing hockey, and um, so it wasn't hard for, as much for me as it was for Andy and Sage. But it was uh, it was super tough. Um. Like, yeah, definitely seeing Christian because our director and the and the director of photography and everybody like they've never skated before. He didn't he's never watched a hockey game. He said he's just like, oh, I don't wow. know how the rule. So I don't know how the rules work. I had to explain there's three periods. And I was like for the storyline, I was like, there's no halftime. Like there's three periods. And like, <laughs> and um, so anyways, yeah, it was uh, it was challenging because he, he was on his skates and he was getting like pulled by his DP and he had his camera. And, they, you know, they're like, I'm like. They got this expensive camera in their hands, but they they showed up and they like hung lighting in the rafters and stuff. It was like wow. really, really well done. So it's cool. Yeah, amazing job. And that's uh, coming out on Prepare for Despair, August 18th. And you got a bunch of tracks out for that right now. Just pretty much, uh, I'd say five or six. Am I correct? Or... Yeah, I think so. You want to talk about them, Andy? I think there's like five out or maybe I think, yeah, I think, I think it's just five. There's a few that we have already released. Um, I know Recover and Dark Days, I think, came out last year. Um, so those two are on there. And now we've got Psycho, Someone You Don't Know, and Safe and Sound. So yeah, there's five out right now. Yeah, yeah amazing too. And uh, even like in your press release too, I saw a little blurb around uh, Someone You Don't Know. And I I thought it was like a really uh, interesting concept that almost anybody who's a human kind of goes through at one time in their life or even multiple totally. times and even beyond um, like romantic relationships within like business too. Sometimes you can be led to think somebody's somebody they're not type of thing too. And do you want to like yeah. give me a little breakdown of uh, kind of putting that song together? That's it's funny because yeah. that that's initially what the song was written about. John and I were kind of talking about the business aspect mm-hmm. of like wh- how those relationships kind of feel. And especially like in our world where we're from, it's like you're always like kind of friends with that person. And then it's like, am I more friends or more of a business associate to this person? And I think those lines kind of get blurred a little bit. So I think that was like initially what drove the song. But I think once we started kind of unpacking just like like what the true feelings were behind it, it became more ambiguous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that also kind of hits close to home to me too, like beyond doing the interviews too. I do like, lots of different production work too and uh sometimes you meet people they promise they promise you things you think they're your best friend you give them the world and then mm-hmm. next thing you know it's like a switch or they're gone and it's just like yeah oh my god i've they been say, used. Hey, smoke this. And, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like and you kind of feel stupid but at the same time it's it's just it's fucking weird how that's uh just so part of the game as like sad as it is in a way it, it's just it's just part of it's just part of life man if there's anything mm-hmm. i've learned it's just like it's just uh people just will come and go dude and it's like uh it's just it's it's it's, it's not so much as like getting like numb to it it's just mm-hmm. kind of like it's just kind of like growing to a point where you have the wherewithal to know to know to to do yourself the justice to like know the difference and know that like you know like i don't know it's just it's not so much like a wall or or something like that it's just experience i guess i I guess is a good word for it and and um and and growing up and and owing it to yourself to kind of like know the difference and still try to you know and then when the stuff like this happens and not 
take it super personally, right? Like, you know, like you say, like, you think, oh, somebody's your friend and all that. And I think Andy, Andy hit the nail on the head. It's like with our business, it's like, it's like, you know, we're in a band where we've been doing this since we were freaking 13 years old or whatever. Right. So it's like, and it was in it, and it started as like going to jam with your friends. Yeah. And then you just fast forward 17 years or whatever. And all of a sudden there's like big, big numbers and money and streams and like budgets. And like, it's a bit, you blink and it's a business. And uh, um, it is really tough because when shit gets real, to put it bluntly, it's like you kind of will see what people's real intentions are and what their priorities are and how low of a priority you might be to that person. And uh, it's though it's happened to myself personally, like a bunch of times, uh, it doesn't it, I, it doesn't really sting any less. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but it's uh, but I'm not at, I'm not as like shocked and like surprised anymore. It's kind of that's why I say like it's like an experience thing. It's not so much like a numbing thing to it. So um and so yeah we were just me and Andy were just outside talking about like what to write about and I was just like dude this is like you know what's going on you know we had like a recent thing and um I was like it kind of feels like this is just I mean like maybe some people can't relate because they're not they're not in the music industry but I think when Andy said um when the song is done and it's written people can kind of like have their own interpretation of it so it's like we just wrote from our experience and like from where we were at personally and stuff and then um it can everyone can kind of relate in their own way to it but that's kind of where we came from from a personal point yeah that's amazing and even like it, it's it's crazy how like such like city or shitty situations could just make amazing art as well like you take this yeah. whole perspective and now you guys got like a hit single out of it type of thing yeah, and even yeah, like yeah. i talked to a lot, a lot of comedians on this show too and we'd be breaking down like different things in their sets too and it's just like oh yeah this thing that's everybody's laughing at and making me money it, that comes from like one of the hardest days of my life type of thing too Trauma. So, yeah yeah it's so <laughs> crazy like just the life of an artist how there's that double-edged sword of like when you get to the that's root what, of things that that's what it is man it's uh yeah it's a it's always art is like a sign of the times whether for better or for worse bad part of your life or whatever and and you learn to laugh at it ironically and that's comedy you know what i mean or you learn to like you take it out on some heavy riff and people are like whoa feel that and it's like well it's because it freaking was damaging me <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah and it's cool to so. just hear like shit like that hasn't discouraged you you guys are keeping going to you mentioned you've been doing this since you were like 13 i've seen people yeah. get in like different situations like this where they've kind of whether they quit like the entertainment industry and everything, but I just kind of want to know what, what's yeah. like the soul that in like heart that keeps point or North, like going like all these years, like why you, you guys seem unstoppable together. I wish I, I mean, like maybe Andy can like uh, quantify that because fuck, I have no idea. It's just one of those things where I just feel like I'll, I'll just speak for myself. I, I don't know how to not be in a band. I, we, like mm -hmm. I said, being, in, being in band since I was 13, it's just like, part of my dna at this point and uh the process the grind the hustle the writing the outdoing it's just like golf i always talk about golf it's just like i'm always trying to score better we're always trying to like write better and be a better producer musician uh the live show is always getting better there's like a never-ending um journey as far as like getting better right like andy said in an interview one time it's like we're not going to stop until we're metallica it's like mm, yes i mean if <laughs> so it's, i don't know but andy if you want to give you like what you think but that's i don't know yeah i mean it's it's sheer autopilot at this point i think we're i mean john and i are just so driven as humans like even like like he you know elaborates with sports and stuff like we are just constantly trying to grow constantly trying to make our bubble better trying to make the world outside of our bubble better um and i think like what really drives us and what keeps us motivated in the band is just that we have poured our whole lives into this. And so it's all we know, it's all we've ever wanted. Um, and now that it's like being shown to us and we feel like, okay, this door is open. Like we're trying to step through it. And once we step through mm -hmm. that, door, we're trying, we're trying to look for more doors to open. And it's just, um, it's just autopilot. And, and it's exhausting at times because it is a grind and it takes so much mental and physical, you know, just, time from you so um yeah. I don't know, at this point 
they're like, I don't think we're searching for a reason to go farther. Like it's just there. It's, it's there. It's always been there. It's always going to be there. And even when we reach yeah. something, we're still looking for more. That's amazing. I truly believe like just kind of that feeling to unconsciously push forward, even when it's the, on like the hardest days. Like, I feel like that's just like a meant to be life calling type of thing too. And uh, it's cool that you guys found that because uh, I meet a lot of people where they're, they're trying to find that, you know, where they yeah. kind of like all over the place doing things and like, that's okay. But it's just, uh, I always think it's so cool when I meet somebody like you guys, where you're just like, yeah, we do this because we do this, you know? Type yeah. Of yeah. Energy. Don't know how to not do it. I, I, I love that. What you said about like, yeah, like we even do it on like the hardest days. There are days for sure. And I think Andy can like testify, like even on tours or our busy years where I'm just like, dude, this is too gnarly like you know and like that's it's it's just like it just it comes with so many like hardships for sure and it's just that feeling that it's just like bigger than that problem in that moment is like kind of the perception we kind of carry so um and it's not even like we know like how much bigger it is than that bad moment or where there's going to be this like quote-unquote safe place we land somewhere um because we're, we're in uncharted waters like we've been doing this forever and this is i i mean i can confidently say like the most like successful musical endeavor andy and i have like ever done um and we're just kind of like riding the wave and yeah like we've definitely like wiped out a couple times <laughs> and <laughs> yeah like you know we go through it and stuff but um we say the course and because that's just, it comes down to, that's just like our character. Like we're not quitters and mm -hmm. like, we'll, we'll bet you complain all day. And, um, you know, we'll have our spouts like brothers do and stuff, but like, it's at the, at the end of the day, it's like, we're still here. So, I mean, it's, it's a, yeah. it's a, whatever the point North entity is, it's above any of us. And we're just kind of, in its shadow you know what i mean until something until i don't know yeah. <laughs> like I, I couldn't i couldn't define our success or anything yeah it just seems tried. like the trifecta all has like this common goal whether it's spoken or not too and that's like kind of like the understanding you know, that just kind of unconsciously pushes you all forward yeah totally yeah. so cool and even um it's cool to hear um a lot of like your background of being influenced by hardcore music uh i know you sing like very clean amazing like soaring melodies but uh as i was like going through your music too like i'd always hear something a little something in the riff or whatever you know? <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, it's, it's like that kind of hits close to home to me like uh just kind of being a teenager in the early 2000s with the metalcore scene and stuff and everything like that and i remember that style of music um it just hit me so hard where it like kind of just shaped me like as a human being and I kind of want to know like with yeah. you guys uh growing up listening to like whatever genres you, is there any like certain tracks or just bands you remember discovering where you're just like holy fuck and it just kind of changes the yeah. brain chemistry or makes you like I want to be a musician type of moments sure did. Those moments were so powerful when they were happening that they've carried me like 17 years now and I'm still listening to them and still like feeling the the excitement and just like the power from that. Um, but yeah, there's there's, you know, John and I, I think we're we there's so many bands that that are like, you know, in our where our Venn diagram crosses over um, American Idiot was probably like the most life-changing record for me I think just because that's where I like sat in my room and like took my first shitty guitar and tried to figure out like what they were doing and how to play these songs and how similar they were and like just what what changing a key could do to like the feel of a song and everything like that so mm -hmm. I want to say like me sitting at home um, like playing American Idiot was like really like where I changed from like, this is really cool to listen to, to this is really cool to do. It's amazing. Yeah. Even, 
even like I, I know like a lot of people around like that era too. Green Day was such like an influence on guitar players because of like you said, you can learn a power chord, move it around and just kind of learn like little like fundamentals. And it's just kind of moving right. that same power chord. You can like learn almost every Green Day song and people would get yeah. excited about playing guitar. It's like, oh, I could yeah. play all like, these. Uh like so not much to, power. like a total music nerd either but like we were listening to those records and then i would like put on enema of the state by blink and be like wait these are like the same chords in the same songs mm. and i'd like yeah. listen to alkaline trio which is like you think this darker like different kind of feel and i was like oh they're just doing the same things too and then i'd put on like an as la dying record and a kill switch record and i'd be like wait there's so many similar <laughs> things happening here too like yeah. what is this language that everyone is seemingly speaking like i need to understand that yeah amazing uh, what about play. you john yeah. um yeah man like uh right there with andy like i think just to touch on like the power chord thing i think there's something so powerful in an album like you say where you can just learn the power chord and move around like if that doesn't teach you about like subconsciously or not, like how melodies work over different progressions and why this pocket of a melody rubs cool with this pocket of like the chords behind it. Like there was those kind of things that were like inexplicable to me at the time that just kind of gave, they, they just give you an emotional reaction, right? When you hear a certain rub or a certain dissonance or a certain like, like chord, right? Cause I believe that like a production like the entire song is like essentially creating the whole chord for you. So it's like the vocal singing this, the guitar is doing this, the bass doing that, whatever. Um, and then maybe like there's like a keys or something happening and they're, they're playing this. And um, that's kind of like what I was always like hearing and I didn't know how to describe it. Um, but like, yeah, I think, I think around that time before American Idiot came out, like I was like a huge Ramones fan. And that's the exact, and that's the same shit. That's the, that's like, you know, that's the same power chords, like the same three chords. And it's like, that was um that was punk but that was those were hooks those guys like it was like different though but they were hooks and like trying to understand like why they're so memorable um and stuff was was really pivotal for me and i'll the i guess i never really had like an album per se that made me think like oh this is what i want to do like forever there was just little tiny moments like the the huge thing um was uh toto's the line and mm -hmm. that was playing on my dad's alarm clock. And I was like a freaking eight or nine year old or something. And I remember being like, oh my God, like as soon as that chorus hit and those giant power chords come in, I was like, that is something special. Like that was like, for whatever reason, like Toto. And then, uh, and then I remember uh, my dad and I were driving one time and uh, Bohemian Rhapsody came on and it got to the, the solo, uh, the big build in the solo. And he was like, and this is where you remember they're a rock band. And he like turned up the radio yeah. and I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like what <laughs> yeah. is happening? This is Amazing. freaking great. And then, uh, and then, yeah, Andy and I both like were big fans of that movie um, called That Thing You Do, you know, with Tom Hanks and Liv Tyler um, about like a band in the 60s coming up and climbing the charts and going from selling uh, like, like kitchen appliances or washer dryers or whatever they were. Uh, all the way up until like their massive success and then the drama of the band and it was just a great story if you've never seen it awesome movie um but i was like dying to be shades right was like the drummer uh he would always wear like you know his freaking bob dylan ray bands and he was like playing <laughs> the drums and so i had like i had like those like 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 devil sticks or something like those toys where you have the two mm. sticks and flip around i think yeah i remember so i was like a, yeah i was like a little kid and i was like i was like just doing like that da, 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 and like just like pounding them on the couch and then again my dad comes up my dad has a musical background too or whatever but he comes up to me and he like grabs my hands with him and goes got 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 oh nice and then it was just a light switch i was just like it was like one of those things where you have that moment you ever like do like practice something and then you do it and you're like oh my god i did it like you know your first slap shot or like that you actually like lift off the ice or something or um yeah, it was yeah. like that. And so it's so yeah, my mine is just more of an amalgamation of like moments like that where there were just like these little switches. And then all of a sudden I started playing guitar for my elementary school's choir. And I heard the way the choir sounded behind me, the way I would like play this like little nylon string acoustic guitar. And then the first time I ever jammed with somebody was like a, a drummer that was the same age as me and we were probably 10 years old. And we I just like I I know how to play free falling. You want to try that song? And then we played free falling. 
And like him playing the beat behind my guitar was the first time I had ever collaborated in a live music setting with like someone else. And I like was embarrassed. That I couldn't get the smile off my face. Like it was like this, like <laughs> I was like, I was like hiding my face. Like cause we were in this tiny little drum room and uh, it was like this, like uh, it's like, you know, the first high, it was like this thing that, I'll never feel again and I'll chase it for the rest of my life. But it's like, that is like, that was it. That was probably the moment it was like playing it together and stuff and feeling like the amp and the, and the loudness and feeling as drum. It was a cool drum room. It was treated well. It was nice and punchy and dry. And, uh, and so, yeah. And then, yeah, then, then the albums came and then all the dissection came of everything about the, about them and stuff. And then, you know, music progressed and my life progressed and I went through phases and I loved everything. And then, and then, yeah. Let's fast forward yeah. freaking 20 years here we are yeah and those fucking moments you'll never forget ever it's crazy nah. you just you especially like if you hear bohemian rhapsody or like one of those songs it just like takes you back to that place and i think yeah. what's amazing about uh you guys like the amount of reach you're getting you're gonna be that for some kids around do you ever like think of that or like <laughs> conscious of that it's hard to think about uh mm. what do you think andy I, mean, I think we, Andy's Andy's teaching kids now, right? You're doing oh, like... amazing. Yeah, yeah, and I think a lot of a lot of my students are fans too, which is just like so cool because there there's just a blue there is a blueprint to all of this. Like, I mean, anything that we've ever done, um, we can teach and we can show, and I just think the world is a better place when you share that information and you share those blueprints instead of just like keeping it close knit um yeah yeah, i mean if like if it's ever some kid's dream to like play guitar like me um i'll show you just how to do it oh amazing and um a lot a lot of uh creatives actually kind of gravitate to these segments and and like conversations i have uh, on the show and uh just i guess that's like a final question um if some young kids like who are in a band um, almost like when you guys started uh, are kind of listening to you guys and listening to this. And uh, would you have like any advice for them to go from the level of playing in their garage to almost taking the net or like the first step into the music industry? First thing I would say yeah. is your drummer knows how to play to a click. That's probably something <laughs> I would tell them. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think something that John and I have always said when people ask us that is like, just keep doing it like the only reason john and i are still here like there's people that are more talented than us there's people that are Mm -hmm. better looking than us there's people that have more money than us there's people that are in a better position to succeed than us um but we just never stopped like we just kept being in bands we kept playing shows even if it was to five or ten people um we kept you know just going to concerts and trying to be inspired and like see okay what are they doing what gear are they using um what cool moments in the set are they creating outside of songs um so we just always kept our our ears and eyes open and i would just tell that (laughs) that young band to do the same just just keep doing it yeah yeah i'd kind of say the same thing i would just i would say like first and foremost like just like first things first is like make sure you're like doing this for the right reasons and like if there's if you're surrounded by some people there's the people like in your band or whatever that like aren't there for the right reasons like the the sooner they go the sooner you'll move up and it's not like it's like a bad thing it's like the right reasons are like you like love music you know as soon as like things happening like uh like you know if there's like money or success or shows it's like great like that's awesome or you know there's there's plenty of like people that we see um or that i've seen and it's just like okay like you just want to be a famous person or something you know Mm -hmm, what i mean like um and so and so really like step back it's because it is it's a grind and it's and it's it's a never-ending grind and it's it comes from loving it like you have to love this if you don't like love getting in the studio and like writing the songs and like just like the process or like like what like what if you're wasting your time you know so it's like first and foremost do it for the right reasons and like and stay the course like uh i think it's just it's it's really what andy said it's like it really is a testament of time um, and I think that goes hand in hand with eliminate the myth of overnight success. As soon as you take that part of maybe, just maybe, this one TikTok, whatever, if you just remove that from your work ethic entirely, 
you will already be 10 steps ahead of everybody else because mm -hmm. everybody else is looking for their cheap, easy way to get to the top. And it's just not how this works. And sure, you have like the lottery winners that like go viral and get signed to Atlantic, but they drop off as fast as they get picked up. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, and Andy and I are in the business of a long-term project, a long-term business. And it comes from touring for years, writing a trillion fucking songs. So all the bad, because the, the way you write good songs is by writing a lot of bad ones. And there's no person ever that just like sat down at a piano and wrote fucking piano man. Like that's like, it's yeah. just, no, it's just, it's, a, it's also a man. So like rid yourself of the illusion of overnight success, stay the course and do it for the right reasons. And you will be fine. That's my advice. Yeah. Well said guys. And uh, I want to thank you for your time. Um, just to remind people, the album is coming out August 18th and you guys are also touring yes, in the fall. Uh, I know it's strictly an American tour, but if you guys ever come to Toronto, I will be there it is let's uh, go yeah <laughs> it's very <laughs> nice to meet you guys and vibe with you guys and uh hopefully i get to talk to you on your next project as well yeah of course. we'll do it it's all right guys. Here. thanks for having us man hope you enjoyed our interview with point north i really enjoyed talking to those guys great vibes great music and like we mentioned prepare for despair the album drops on august 18th also, there will be a little link attached, whether you're watching this on YouTube, seeing the social media posts, the Creative Imbalance website, all that, where you can click on and get more details and give Prepare for Despair a listen. Every track I've heard so far is fucking awesome, so do it! Also, we can't leave without thanking all you legends on the Patreon page. First up, our boy Mike Carniello of the Testing with Mike YouTube channel. The lovely Amanda McKnight of Top 10 Nerd. The wonderful Jenny Potter. The legend Devin McBride. Ryan frickin' Campbell. My favorite soul singer, Saber. And last but not least, Francis Coffer, aka my mom. If you want to support the show and get all these episodes early, raw, uncut, right when I'm done the Zoom call, I post them. You can go to patreon.com slash the creative imbalance. It's only $4 a month. Get everything early. Get a shout out at the end of the show. And at the end of the day, you can go to bed at night knowing you're a badass motherfucker who supports raw, uncut, independent media. And nobody can take that away from you. You hear me? With that being said, we got a lot of amazing interviews for you around the corner. I was a little worried. I had a bunch lined up and the writer strike happened and they all got canceled. But we did some flippy do's, some shuffling, and the train keeps moving on. So stay tuned for more. And like always, I've been your host, Sean Siriani, and we'll catch you next time. Ciao!